Elijah Harper's commitment and dedication to asserting and upholding First Nation rights in recognition has helped lay a solid foundation as this hard work continues today. The AFN is grateful to Elijah for his legacy and to his wife and family for supporting his efforts on matters most paramount to Indigenous peoples. Education is, a, is, is part of uh, improving our lives, empowering ourselves, and uh, it's, it's a way to, to, uh, to, road to get out of the situation we're in. Some things are going to be resolved, but in order to talk freely of those things, you have to release yourself of those pains of everyone, no matter what race, color, or creed. Many people felt felt that uh, that they could let go of the past, be released of, of the hurt and pain, but still there's many that haven't. I believe it's about time that you allow the Aboriginal people to be heard. At this time, we the Black Lives Singers would like to dedicate this veteran song to all the veterans throughout the United States and Canada. And we certainly thank you for your services. Thank you. Elijah Harper, Minister Without Portfolio Response. Aboriginal people in this country. 
He had a huge impact, not only on myself, but all leaders, young leaders of today. Do we have the house to sit beyond 12.30? No, no, there is no leave. I believe that Aboriginal peoples now have a greater pride and confidence in their abilities. Indigenous people in our treaty relationship, we look at the treaties as being sacred, very sacred, and they're binding. Mm -hmm. And the government has not fulfilled uh, the treaty obligations, land questions, uh, revenue sharing. Uh, you know, we have rights to to education and health. You know, and and those those benefits would accrue from the land and resources that we shared with the government. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I know that uh, the federal government receives royalties, revenues, you know, generated from these resources, from forestry, mining, gas and oil and, and fisheries, you know, billions of dollars. You know, I know they, they have 
They have the money, the wherewithal to meet its treaty obligations, mm -hmm. but they don't. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's really a problem. They, they've put us in, uh, in reservations in which we've uh, experienced, uh, uh, you know, uh, terrible living conditions, uh, social chaos, and, uh, uh, you know, we have family breakdown. And on top of that, you know, people that have gone to residential school being denied of our culture, being void of who we are, our identity, our language, our culture, you know. And that's something that uh, we're trying to, try to, uh, I guess, instill in our, our young people. And some, we do have uh, very strong elders and, and people who speak their language, I speak my language, but our younger people begin to lose, lose that. And uh, so we're, I think, in a rebuilding mm -hmm. stage for, for, our, for our communities. And the government needs to recognize that. And that's why I say the government apologized. Uh, and the example that I gave was uh, about the man, you know, raping a woman. And you know, the, the obligation extends mm -hmm. much beyond because of the consequences, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, so the government, in its apology, did not say this is what will happen, lay out a program, how we might be healed, you know. for the venerated leader are pouring in from coast to coast, but so far, Prime Minister Stephen Harper has remained silent. Elijah Harper, I think, changed the landscape of Canada for generations to come. Um, I would think that, uh, that Prime Minister Harper would probably uh, uh, comment, hopefully, in the next day or, or coming days about uh, the passing of, of Elijah. Elijah Harper passed away from a heart attack due to diabetes complication but not before fulfilling a lifelong goal. To say no it took me 10 days. So On behalf of my constituents and all new Democrats, I would like to, like to stand in this house and pay tribute to Elijah Harper. I would like to share our condolences with Elijah Harper's family and his community on this great loss. I had the honour of knowing Elijah from a young age as he was first elected MLA in Manitoba in 1981, along with my father. Elijah made history as the first First Nations person to be elected as MLA and then as Cabinet Minister in Manitoba. He changed the course of history by speaking for Aboriginal people on the Meech Lake Accord. He spoke with courage on First Nations issues and was a champion for First Nations sovereignty, for justice, for building a better future. I have the honour to represent the same constituency that Elijah Harper represented, including Red Sucker Lake, Elijah's First Nation, a nation that is so proud of him. I was fortunate to have the opportunity to meet with Elijah on a number of occasions to share perspectives on Northern and Aboriginal issues. Elijah Harper was a visionary and a trailblazer. He was a role model and history will record him as being a great leader for First Nations, for Manitobans, and for Canadians. Thank you, Elijah. Chi miigwech. Good afternoon, Nishinikazanita Olson Harper. I'm from the Laksul First Nation. 
I would like to say thank you to the elders and all the chiefs who have um, contributed to this um, memorial to my husband. At this point, I would like to have uh, Grand Chief Derek Nipinap say a few words. Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, miigwech. Bujuno ichi yogi ma kanak, ni bin ma kwan dish na kazma kwan to tem. It's a great honor to me to be requested by the family to share a few words in reflection upon the great accomplishments of a great man, Elijah Harper. I know that there are many leaders here today that had uh, worked with him much longer than I have, but uh, you know, recognizing the, the family asking me to speak on this, uh, on this occasion is a, is a great honor on behalf of the Manitoba Chiefs. It's uh, been some time now since I sat at the table of Elijah and he told me, we don't want any taxpayer dollars. We want our share of our wealth, of our resources, in our ancestral lands. And you know, that's a common, common thread that runs through some of the teachings we've had from some of the great treaty freedom fighters of the last generation. And I include uh, the late Tobasonic Watkinu in that discussion because he told me that it, you know, when, he was, when he was alive, he said it was our generation that got Section 35 in the Constitution. It's going to be your generation that gets our resources back. So there is a common message, a common theme that resonates, you know, from those great leaders who are passing on now. And, you know, when we recognize and reflect upon the great accomplishments, we recognize the ongoing mandate, the ongoing work that has to continue from their contributions. You know, of course, Jim, Jim Sinclair being the, the freedom fighter as well, he contributed, and I knew all three of them very well because I sat and received their counsel and their teachings throughout my tenure, and even before my tenure as a student, as a learner. It's been a great honour to, to have learned from them. Recognise the ongoing mandate we have that's been set in the foundations by these great leaders. Kachim Miigwech, thank you. Elijah's drive and actions toward reconciliation will continue to be a legacy for First Nations and all Canadians as we move toward improved and renewed relationships based on mutual respect and recognition. Like he's just courageous, man. He's awesome. He's just like where every Native person should be when you're on that healing path in today's Native community. One of our great leaders of our time and uh, a man of uh, strength and conviction and uh, one of our heroes. He'll be remembered for having brought Aboriginal issues to a much higher profile and to a much more important status in Canada. Elijah Harper will be remembered as uh one of the first people, uh, elected politicians, who raised the voice of Aboriginal people when it came to important questions like constitutional change and the need to uh, hear the voice of Aboriginal people in major decisions that are made across the country, including in uh, projects uh, where we develop our natural resources in this country. So You'd always say, you know, I'm the MLA. I'm the most loved Aboriginal. And indeed he was. Not for only his stand on each leg, but how he carried himself with honour and dignity and respect and kindness and compassion. Oh, oh, oh.